Gal Luft, the Biden whistleblower who has been indicted by the Biden DOJ. Some people speculate because he has blown the whistle on the Biden crime family. Now we know those prosecutors who have charged him donated to Biden. Very interesting. Kind of feels like a conflict of interest. Everywhere we turn, we find no more U.S. attorneys and in some cases judges who conveniently donated to Joe Biden or people in his orbit. And they all have one thing in common. They don't like Republicans. They don't like Trump and they don't like people who get in the way of their political momentum. And so Gal Luft is somebody who is blowing the whistle. There are prosecutors who are prosecuting him and we'll take a look at their records, but something else is happening here. Democrats are saying that now since the DOJ has actually indicted Dr. Luft, that they are colluding with criminals and maybe the Republicans should be investigated too for colluding with criminals. I mean, the DOJ said so, so therefore it must be true. We've got guys like Dan Goldman said the Republicans have gotten duped and maybe the Democrats need to start an inquiry of their own. But here is the report from the Washington Free Beacon says that prosecutors of the Biden family corruption witness Gal Luft donated to Joe Biden and other Democrats. Very convenient. Says the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan unsealed charges against Luft, who claims to have been given the FBI information about the Biden crime family business dealings. But we've got two attorneys who were on the case, Catherine Ghosh and Daniel Rickenthal. They conducted the interview with Luft in 2019. So they meet with him. He tells them, hey, Biden is a total disaster. He's a criminal and this is what's going on. We didn't know though. They were donating to the guy. Both of them have contributed exclusively to Democrats. You're kidding me. Weird. Ghosh made 35 contributions in the 2020 election cycle. <laughs> So she meets with him in 2019. He says, hey, Biden's a criminal. And she says, well, let's go over to JoeBiden2020.com and, and enter my credit card information. Sounds like my kind of guy. And also made donos to the DNC, according to campaign finance records. Rickenthal contributed to 2008 Obama-Biden when he served in the private practice. Okay, so that's a little bit different. And so she presumably was working there in 2020 when she made those donos because she met with him in 2019. Okay. She was an attorney. She met with him. He blew the whistle on Biden. She went and donated to Biden anyways. The other guy, we can't really hold him to any standard. He was in private practice and wasn't a U.S. attorney. So he's fair game. Donate all you want. Here are the campaign finance records for Ghosh from FEC.gov. You can see Catherine Ghosh right there. A lot of small donos. Catherine Ghosh from Act Blue. The date of the receipt, 1-2-2021. She heard everything the gal had to say. She's like, I love it. Sounds great. Let me do a $5 contribution. Five bucks, five bucks, five bucks here. DNC, seven bucks. Act Blue, 1250. DNC, these are all in 2020. A lot of Act Blues there. That's all on the first page. We go to page two. We've got Obama for America, Senate Committee, a lot of Act Blue stuff there, and the DNC. So, very interesting. Seems like a pretty active contributor to a bunch of Democratic causes. And that's after she's got information about the Joe Biden criminality. So, very curious. And we ask ourselves if these people could be any more conflicted at all. Hard to imagine. But Dan Goldman doesn't like people investigating the Democrats. And he doesn't like whistleblowers who make it more difficult for their side. So when Gal Luft comes out and the Republicans have conversations with him when James Comer and other people want to invite him over for dinner, Dan Goldman, who basically bought his Congress seat, has said that maybe we should investigate them. They're investigating us. They're blowing the whistle on us. Maybe we should prosecute Congress too. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Dan Goldman of New York. He's a member of the House Oversight Committee. Congressman, good morning. You and Congressman Jamie Raskin have written a letter to Congressman Comer, which reads in part, we are concerned that an official committee of the House of Representatives has been manipulated by an apparent con man who, while a fugitive from justice, attempted to fortify his defense by laundering unfounded and potentially false allegations through Congress. It appears as if Mr. Luft sought whistleblower status from you in an effort to defend himself from criminal prosecution while a fugitive from justice. Worse yet, this latest episode also raises concerns that Mr. Luft may be manipulating your investigation, not only for his own self-interest, but perhaps also in furtherance of the CCP's efforts to undermine U.S. security oh, interests and the president Comer of the is United working States. With so, Congressman, China. who is Gal Luft for our audience and who is he not, as James Comer and others have suggested he is? Well, he's certainly not a legitimate whistleblower. And what he is is an alleged con man, as we said in the letter, alleged. who brokered a weapons for oil deal between China and Iran multiple times, who was an unregistered agent 
and uh, advancing the interests of the CCP in the United States, and who, very importantly, is indicted on making false statements to the FBI, including... In when he was there to blow the whistle on the Biden people, they turned around and indicted him for that meeting. You know who he was involved in a lot of this stuff with? Hunter. In the very meeting that he provided information about Hunter Biden to the FBI. Yes. So the remarkable situation that we're in now is that the key whistleblower informant slash witness in Cong Chairman O'Comer's oversight investigation into the bogus allegations of the Biden crime family and all that is actually someone who has represented the interests of the CCP, has lied to the FBI. FBI and is a fugitive from justice who is literally running away from accountability from the United States court system. And upon receiving that information, it's amazing. These people still think that we and other people who are maybe not as adherent to our justice system, that, that they think that we think that it's still legitimate. We don't. And Gal Luft agrees with that. He says, why am I going to go there to your fake court system where I'm not going to get a fair trial? We know another person who was indicted in a similar, you know, related type of set of charges, when that trial, Patrick Ho went forward, he was not even allowed to mention the Bidens, even though he was commingled with the Biden family in all of these affairs. So Luft says, I'm not coming back to pl to placate your court. You guys are going to throw me in solitary. I'll never see the light of day again. This is the point. As more of this happens, th these institutions lose their legitimacy and there will be less of this compliance with the courts. As people know, they're just extensions of the Biden administration to do their bidding to preserve their own power. Chairman Comer, we would naturally think would say, oh boy, let's let's hold back here. This guy is has zero credibility and he may actually be uh, advancing nefarious interests. No, he's doubling down now and trying to continue to use uh, this alleged criminal to support his bogus allegations. Obviously, we want to hear from him, right? Maybe you guys should offer him immunity and he can come and testify in Congress. If he's such a uh, menace and such a criminal, we want to hear from him and his claims about the Biden administration will clearly be exonerated. So the interviews that he had with the U.S. Attorney's Office, can we release those? All of their notes from that meeting in Brussels in 2019, can we see all of that? Can you unseal all of those records? Can you tell us about the investigation so that we can judge for ourselves? We don't take your word for it, DOJ or Dan Goldman. And so we want to know more. The DOJ and the FBI and the people leading these investigations have proven themselves to be untrustworthy and they no longer get the benefit of the doubt in good faith. Here's McCarthy who weighs in on this, says someone's lying out there. Based upon that meeting and based upon what Garland has told us, someone is lying. And in doing so, I raised the question is, we have to know who in this process is lying. And if it f is found that, that Attorney General Garland is lying, that rises to the level of an impeachment inquiry. We'll see. Certainly feels like Merrick Garland has been lying to us, but time will tell if Congress does anything about it. We also know that Lindsey Graham got a letter from David Weiss. David Weiss is the U.S attorney who is prosecuting Hunter Biden, giving him that sweetheart plea deal. And we've had many questions about whether this investigation is over. Are they going to file more charges? Did David Weiss have the ability to declare special counsel status so he could bring charges in other states like in D.C. where a Biden appointed U.S. attorney exists or in California? Same story there. Who knows? But in this case, Weiss sent a letter to Lindsey Graham, explained to him not much. And this is Graham's reaction. This is an important moment. Here. Get a room. Here's what I can tell you without any doubt. When it comes to the Department of Justice, I don't trust them. They got to come forward under oath and testify. So here's what the whistleblower has said, the group of whistleblowers, that Hunter Biden got the benefit of the doubt, unlike anybody they've ever seen, and they've been there for decades, that every time there was a question, it wound up being in Hunter Biden's favor. They claimed that Mr. Weiss, the U.S. attorney from Delaware, sought special counsel status and was denied that status, and that he wanted to bring charges in D.C. and California, but he was told no. So what did I do? I wrote Mr. Weiss and said, what's the deal here? Did you ask? 
asked for special counsel status. He told me in the letter he had a discussion about it, but he was sure he could get it if he needed it, and he never really answered the question. The second thing that he said in the letter back to me was he never went to D.C. or California for more serious charges. He was never rebuffed by those jurisdictions. But here's the big one. I asked him about the 1023. Remember the 1023 report? If it had not been for Senator Grassley, we would never known that there was an accusation that Hunter and Joe Biden both were involved in a bribery scandal involving Burisma, the, the giant uh, gas company, uh, in Ukraine. That 1023 investigative report was found by Senator Grassley. It was redacted. He got the redactions lifted. And we now know a credible source for the FBI, literally on their payroll, claims that there were conversations up to 15 between Hunter and Joe Biden regarding a gas company official in the Ukraine. Here's what Mr. Weiss said. I cannot tell you about that accusation because it's part of a criminal investigation. Yeah. That's one of two things that they're still looking at Hunter Biden for additional charges, what I, I don't believe that. They don't want to tell me what happened to the 1023 investigation. And I can tell your audience, you're all going to know what happened. Did they sweep it under the rug? Did they investigate and find out it was fraudulent? I want to know what happened to the accusations regarding Hunter Biden and Joe Biden taking bribes in Ukraine. I did not get that answer in this letter. I'm not going to stop until I found out to find out how that accusation was disposed of. Sounds like a good plan. Lindsey Graham can sometimes string some wins together. We'll see if he actually stays on this Answer one. to my letter by Mr. Weiss to say case closed. I wrote the letter. I didn't get an answer about what Mr. Weiss did regarding the 1023 investigation about Hunter and Joe Biden uh, potentially taking bribes in Ukraine. He didn't answer that question. Here's what I do know, that I don't trust the system to tell me the truth. I want to know what happened. Who did you talk to to, di to dismiss the allegation? How did you dispose of this allegation? And I do know this for a thousand percent for sure, that the FBI and other Department of Justice officials briefed Mr. Weiss and his team about the 1023. They were told by other people in the Department of Justice, this is not Russian disinformation. You need to look at it. That is curious. And we are slowly starting to see some of these connections materialize. We're getting more and more Congress people by the day, by the week, who are starting to scream about this. We've got Rubio, we've got Graham. You know, we're, we're getting it to a point where we might be reaching critical mass at some point, or maybe now we get something done about this because we've also got to get the Senate upset about it. And we've got Graham, we've got Rubio and others are speaking out. And we know that testimony is starting soon. Representative James Comer is explaining that we have whistleblower testimony from the Biden crime family whistleblowers very soon. Two people we've talked a lot about here read through their opening statements and their transcripts to the House Ways and Means Committee, I believe, Oversight Committee. And they explained all of the evidence. Two people, Gary Shapley and Mr. X, talking to Congress soon. It's going to be televised. We hope Newsmax will cover it. Yeah, America's going to get to see who witness X is. Right and, on. And uh, I think that uh, both witnesses are going to have a wealth of information that they're going to be able to share with the House Oversight Committee. We have bank records. We have bank violations. We have very specific tax questions to ask these whistleblowers. And what we've learned from the transcript that they gave with the Ways and Means Committee, these two IRS employees knew a lot more than I would have ever dreamed about the Bidens and all the corruption uh, that's taken place with all the shell companies and the various different bank accounts. They didn't know about all the shell companies, Rob, because yeah. they were told to stand down by the Department of Justice, but they knew about at least a third of them. So we've got some very specific questions, and I think that America's going to get to see firsthand just how involved Joe Biden was in the family's uh, right. shenanigans and just how corrupt what the Bidens were doing was. Right. And just to, to remind our viewers, is that when, when they started blowing the whistle on, on, on the IRS, basically trying to shut this down and give Hunter this sweetheart deal, they blew the whistle and they were removed from the case, which talk about yep. obstruction of justice. Um, yep. You're, you're now demanding an unredacted copy of the FBI report made after the 2019 interviews with Gal Luft in Belgium. Uh, Luft claims Unsealed that Biden all. took uh, huge amounts of money from the Chinese for beneficial policy decisions here in the United States. It is the most damning claim that we've seen. And, and you're looking for more information from the FBI. Tell us about that. Gal Luft worked for the same company that the Bidens worked for, CEFC. 
But yet the Department of Justice indicted Gal Luff for being an unregistered foreign agent. Now, I'm not saying that was the wrong thing for the Department of Justice to do. Right. I just think it's odd considering Hunter Biden worked for the same company and was paid about 25 times more than Luff. But Luff knows exactly what CEFC was. He knew exactly what role the Bidens played in it, including Joe Biden. And the reason Gal Luft is important to our investigation, Rob, is he's one of the few people in the United States who actually was also on the payroll with the Bidens. So the Bidens have never answered the question, what did you do to receive the millions of dollars Gal Luft that knows. your family got from China? Gal Luft may have the answer to that. He knows. So he's he was a in very it. important witness to us. And I just find it yeah. shocking that the day he turns up, the day he records that video to Miranda Devine at the New York Post, the Department of Justice unseals this indictment, yeah. and they indicted him for the same thing that I thought Hunter Biden should have been indicted for years ago. Let's, let's, let's just face the... Gal Luft actually told them, he said, po post it up there, indict me, or, or show me the indictment. He knows he's already been indicted. And they posted it. But, you know, I think they did that literally to not necessarily call his bluff, but just to change the narrative. His video was spreading all over the place. They needed to say, uh-oh, he's a criminal. He's a criminal now. Don't believe anything. And so we're very much looking forward to Gary Shapley and Mr. X, who will be revealed testifying in front of Congress. That's going to be taking place. We're going to cover it. So make sure you're subscribed when we do.